today uh, we have a guest. I finished our series last Sunday on the journey to the cross. And I had heard about Philip Renner and discovered him on Instagram. And I called him. I said, I need you to come uh, this Sunday. He said, I'll come. He is uh, part of a um, Christian legacy family in America. His father and mother are generals in our Christian Pentecostal faith worldwide. His father's written 20 books. Dressed to Kill is one of the best books he's ever written. The book I love is a part one and two volumes. Uh, Is it Sparkles? Yeah. Uh, From uh, the Greek. And he's a brilliant Greek theologian. And I mean, one of the volumes... I, it's about that thick. I mean, I've, I've preached. It's just filled with stuff. I mean, just brilliant. Rick Renner. And uh, in 23 years ago, he felt led of the Lord to leave America and move to uh, Russia, Latvia, his whole family. You just don't do that. And uh, then they, from Latvia, they moved then to Moscow and having a national television ministry throughout Russia and Ukraine. It's shocking what they've accomplished for God. And he's going to tell you, Philip is going to tell you all about it today, but he came back two years ago because God called him back to America for the revival God's going to bring us. Uh, He has his lovely wife, uh, Ella, with him this morning. All three brothers or the three sons of the renters they all married russian girls hallelujah anyway so uh yeah they they they're 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 in they're they're totally totally for jesus and today as we always do we always stand and we always give an ovation a clap to the man or woman of god who preaches from this pulpit would you join me in welcoming evangelist Philip Renner. God bless you, Pastor Phil. We love you. You may be seated. Wow, it's such an honor to be in this house because I can feel faith in the room. Come on, turn to your neighbor and say, can you feel that? That's faith. (laughs) That's the presence of God because where God's people are, perfect love casts out fear. Amen. Amen. And I'm so honored to be here. I so respect uh, Pastor Rich and Robin and what this church is doing for the community and in this city. It's truly powerful and it's truly apostolic what God is doing. I want us to lift up our hands because I'm going to start with a scripture that I speak every single day. And it's Psalm 63, 4 through 5, and it says, Your goodness and your mercy, come on, say it. Your goodness and your mercy is better than this life. Therefore, I'm going to lift my hands and praise you until my very last breath. Amen. Give the Lord a shout of praise. He's a good God. You know, the beautiful thing about that scripture is it doesn't matter what happened yesterday. It doesn't matter what happens today. It doesn't matter what happens tomorrow. It doesn't matter what happens 10 years from now. His goodness and his mercy is better. His love and his kindness is better. And he's a good, good father. He's a good father that loves you, that fights your battles. And the enemy is going to be sorry that he messed with you. Because you got a good father, a ferocious father. You know, if when somebody messes with my kids, I don't hug them and say, oh, I love you. <laughs> uh-uh, daddy shows up. <laughs> and it's, you don't touch my girls. <laughs> you shut your mouth. <laughs> because that's the ferocious father. Who fights for us. But she's already been announced, but I'm going to announce her again. My wife, Ella Renner, a lot of the crazy stuff that I do. 
I do only because she says, go for it. <laughs> I'm not exactly sure what you're doing, but go for it. And uh, I call her perfection because everything that she does is perfection. She asks me, how do I look today? I was like, oh, you're perfection. <laughs> I've got two girls, two princesses. One is 14 years old. And when she was five, she received the baptism of the Holy Ghost. She came back from the youth service and said, Dad, I want that, that language. There was something about that. Something about that. There's this fire. Something about that. I, I want that thing. And I was like, you're five. I mean, <laughs> amen, Lord. She's got the desire. So it's all about desire. That's what it's about. And so I pray for her. And man, this river just starts gushing out of her and loud. And she lifts up her hands and about five minutes and she's praying in the spirit. And then, and then she begins to translate all of her tongues. Wow. And she's five, right? So there's a lot of stuff she does not know. But she says, the Lord says that I am a missionary to Africa. And I will see signs and wonders and miracles and crusades. And God's going to use me to destroy racism. And God is going to use me. And it's going to be powerful. And, and I'm going to marry a, a black man. And we're going to have black kids. And, and I'm like, she's five. Sorry. Yeah, she's five at that moment. So if you meet Mia... Within about two minutes, you will know that she is the next revivalist for Africa. <laughs> Before you know about anything else in her life, she's going to tell you about what I'm going to do in Africa. So that's our 14-year-old. And our 7-year-old is very different. Her name's Mika. And uh, recently... Our family, we made a purchase, and so we had, to, we had to take the money out of her savings account, and she found out about it. She was not happy. <laughs> she says, what do you mean you, you took my money? <laughs> that was my money. <laughs> and I go, you know, we had to do it, and she said, so I'm broke? <laughs> so... Uh, <laughs> I'm pretty sure she's going to be a business lady. You know, she's going to rule and reign. I can already feel it. <laughs> she's already got the jar with all of the pennies and everything, and she's going to fund her sister. That's what I believe. So families serve together. Amen? We don't lose anybody when we go hard after God. The whole family goes after God. And if you believe that, give the Lord a shout of praise. Amen? He's so good. So I'm going to share just a little bit of my story. Back in 1991, my father, he felt the call to move to the former Soviet Union. Now, at the time, he was preaching 400 times a year. I mean, he was busy, busy, busy. His books are selling He's in the dream of every single minister, and things are only going to get better. But God says to him, it's time to move to Riga, Latvia, which was right after the fall of the Soviet Union. And he said, I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it. And he tried to find people that would tell him, this is not God. You're crazy. But guess what? <laughs> Everybody said, this is God, Rick. This is God. They need your teaching. He's like. <laughs> he talked to his pastor. He said, this is God. He talked to his friends. This is God. He talked to everyone he could that would try to give him the answer that he really wanted, which was, this is not God. Stay here. <laughs> We're going to miss you, Rick. But everybody said, this is God. And then he talked to my mom. And my mom at the time was having these dreams where she's running away from the KGB. And so she's running 
through the street and she jumps into this trash can. And she's hiding in the trash can, hiding from the KGB, the secret police of the Soviet Union at that time. And then right as they open the trash can, she wakes up. And so those were the nightmares that she was getting. And so dad says, God's telling us to move to the Soviet Union. And mom says, let's do it. So finally, dad says, I'm going to ask the kids. And so I was six at the time. My younger brother, Joel, was two. My older brother was eight. He sits us down and he says, God is calling us to move to the Soviet Union. Do you understand? Yes, daddy, we understand. We didn't understand. Especially my brother who's two. I mean, come on. He can barely talk. Barely say the Soviet Union. Right? And so he's like, God is calling us to live there. They kill Christians there. Me and your mom could die. You could become orphans. Do you understand? Yes, Daddy, we understand. <laughs> you may never see your grandma again. You can forget about what Toys R Us is. There's no toys, no candy, desolation. It's poverty. There's nothing there. Do you understand? Yes, Daddy, we understand. You could die. Yes, Daddy, we understand. <laughs> what do you think? Well, we're quiet for a moment, and then I raise my hand and I say, Well, Daddy, you're going to die anyway, so why don't you die for God? <laughs> <laughs> the rest is history. We moved. Uh, Dad thought it was for two years, but God's full of surprises. It's been 32 so far. Um, and we started the first TV network that at one point reached 100 million people. And the first programs were really funny because, you know, you have to start in a small way. God doesn't, doesn't want you to, I mean, he doesn't despise the day of small beginnings. Amen. So you just got to start. I don't, know what's, I don't know what's on your heart, but just start. Just start. Just open your mouth and do something. Just get out there and start doing it, and you'll see God push you forward. Because it's the power of God behind you. It's not you. It's not your abilities. Because we're nothing without Him. Absolutely nothing. But when you put your your gift in his hands, that's when he multiplies it. And so I'm looking at people that are about to be multiplied by the glory of God in this place. Come on. But those programs, they were so interesting because there was dad and the translator and the plant. And the plant was very important because that's where they hid the microphone. <laughs> and you spoke into the plant. <laughs> And they went viral. And, you know, 100 million people were watching them. I can remember the, the letter opening parties. And that was the party where everybody did an all-nighter. And we opened the thousands upon thousands of letters that were sent to the office. And I can remember as a kid swimming through the letters. I loved letter opening parties. <laughs> And I swim through those letters. So finally, God did a great work in Latvia. Then we moved to Moscow. And in Moscow is where God really started developing me. And I started serving in the church. Eventually, I became the youth pastor. But as I was pastoring, there was one thing as a youth pastor just really annoyed me. And that was the fact that we were always singing somebody else's song. Yeah. It was always Hillsong. I love Hillsong. It was always Planet Shakers. I love them. Yeah. 
It was, it was all these other phenomenal artists, and I love them. But I said, Lord, where's the Russian sound? We've got to talk to the Russian people in the Russian way. Like, where is the Russian sound? And many times, if something starts burning, if you've got a pain for something, that's what you're supposed to do. Stop talking about it and start doing it. If you're feeling a pain, that's a sign of your calling. If you feel pain when you see kids that are on the street, that's a sign of your calling. If you see pain when you see families that are broken, it's a sign of your calling. If you see Christians that are always begging for finances and it hurts you, it's a sign of your calling because you're one of the ones that's supposed to fund the kingdom. Pain is a sign of the calling. And so I felt this pain, and we started writing songs. And we released this album, and overnight it went viral in 15 different nations. And I was like, Lord, what did you just do? I know I prayed, but wow. Because you ask God to use you, and then you start traveling nine to ten months out of the year, and you're like, man, I didn't want you to use me that much. <laughs> I kind of want to be home every now and then. I want to be a father. I want to be a husband. I mean, mela has been through it. <laughs> but now we do it all together. <laughs> but it caused a movement to start in Russia. Because I would go to and do all these conferences, and this pastor would say, Philip, we need you to show us how you write your songs, how you move in the Spirit. We, we need you to do a workshop on this. And so I'd do a workshop, and then they would begin to write their own music and produce their own album. Then we'd go to another city, and they'd do the exact same thing. And then another country, and go, they'd do the exact same thing. And now we're not one movement. There's many movements. Because you're, you're called to multiply. And I was seeing revival. I'm seeing God move. I'm seeing miracles. I'm seeing mosh pit worship. Man, I like some rowdy worship. I mean, if it's all together, mosh pit, 2,000 people, come on. That's what I love. They do it in the world. Why can't you do it in church? There's joy out there that dies that is not built on anything except sin and filth. But we got the resurrection power of Jesus Christ on the inside, and we can lift up a joyful noise. And so I saw that, and then, you know, 30 minutes later, they're on their faces before the Lord. And now the musicians are on their faces before the Lord, and we can't play because God's in the room. <laughs> And when God's in the room, you don't play, you bow. <laughs> and in times of silence where there was, there's no music, no one's saying anything, prophecy begins to break out and, and God begins to move and people begin to wail and cry. And, and I'm seeing this. I'm seeing this in villages and I'm seeing this in, in big conferences. And I'm like, Lord, I'm in revival. This is awesome. This is what I've always prayed for. But then I got a hold of a book. Someone gave me God's Generals. And if you've never read God's Generals, I really encourage you to read that book. Because it's all about the moves of God that have gone through America. And can I tell you, God is about to move again like never before. He's about to move like never before. And I can remember how I'm reading this, and now I'm dreaming, Lord, signs, wonders, miracles in America. God, people getting saved, not just in churches, but in schools in America. Worship flooding the streets in America. People bowing down because they felt the presence of God. Just when you walk through the street. I mean, it says, Peter, his shadow healed people. So it's not other people's atmosphere that mess with you. You mess with the atmosphere. You walk into the room and fear is gone. 
You walk into the room and depression is gone because the Holy Ghost is on the inside of you. Jesus is on the inside of you and he is more than enough and he's going to give you more than you could ask or imagine and he's just getting started. So the atmosphere doesn't shift you, you shift the atmosphere. And that's what we're called to do. And so I see this and I'm, I'm reading this book and I'm like, Lord, you're going to do it again? You're going to do it again? Yeah. Then I'm like, I'm seeing this in Russia. Why would I do the, think about this in America? I'm already in revival right now, but I just started praying and crying out for America. And the Lord said, it's time to move to America. And so we left everything, did what my father did 32 years ago. We did, and we came to America. And all of these Russian pastors and bishops, they came up to me and said, Philip, we need you. You're not going anywhere. <laughs> and I said, no, 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 you don't get it. I need, I need, I need to go. There's something on the inside. There's something on the inside. And he said, Philip, America is doomed. Revival will never be in America. And I stood back and I was like, how did you get saved? <laughs> kind of puts his head down and goes, an American came to my village. <laughs> and now I got 150 churches. <laughs> I was like, and you preach, you reap what you sow, right? And so if America has been sowing missionaries for the last 200 years, just imagine what kind of revival America is about to reap. Come on, lift up a shout because you're living in the greatest days you could ever imagine for America. Doesn't matter what it says on the TV. It doesn't matter what it says in Instagram. It doesn't matter what it says through TikTok. We're not of this world. We're living in the greatest days America has ever seen, and you're going to be a part of the revival. And so we moved, and, and God started moving, and the first place that the Lord actually told me to go was Chicago. He said, set up right in Daly Plaza. I thought, I'm going to be put in prison. Because <laughs> I tried to get a permit, but they didn't give it to me. But guess what? I got a constitution. <laughs> and so the amazing thing was we're setting up. It's beautiful. God moved. We're worshiping. The whole time I'm thinking, is this really happening? The mayor sent her officials into the worship and they came back and said it was one of the peaceful and the best events that Chicago's ever seen. It was, it was the first live event. It was smack dab in the middle of COVID. And God just continued to call us further and further and further and further. And so we did worship in the gay district in the Cas Castro district in San Francisco. We did worship at Mardi Gras. If there's anywhere where you're so supposed to be cut, robbed, that's where I am. <laughs> and my wife looks at me and says, you're covered in the blood. <laughs> and we take communion every single time because <laughs> it's my covenant. Yes, sir. But it's just beautiful what God is doing and God's going to do it again. Amen. And God's going to do it through you. Yes. He's going to do it through you. Yes. And there is going to be a favor and a blessing on you that no one will ever be able to explain. Right, 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 right. Come on, it's going to happen. Because Psalm 512 says, favor surrounds me like a shield. Favor will open the doors that money can't. Yes. Favor will take you to the places. Yes. I'm not supposed to be here. Literally, I'm not supposed to be here. <laughs> but I didn't even know Pastor Rich. 
So even me standing here is a result of favor. Speaking to you right now is a result of favor. Because favor surrounds you like a shield. People are going to be walking down the streets like, what is that on you? Is that, that's favor. <laughs> and favor ain't fair. <laughs> that's not fair. Yeah, that's the word. Because I'm his kid. And he's going to take me to places where they say I can't go. He's going to use me when they say that I'm unqualified. Come on, lift up your hands if you believe that. Because the Bible says that he, he will take the ones that are unqualified, the ones that are foolish of the world to confound the wise, the ones that are weak to confound the strong. So you are perfect for the job. <laughs> you are perfect for what God has called you to do. And I didn't think I'd go into this place this morning, but I want to give you some of your spiritual names. And it says in Revelation 14, 17, it says that these are the people, and I'm looking at those people right now, that these are the people that will fight with the lamb. They're on the lamb's side. And they overcome the dragon. They are called, chosen, and faithful. Come on, I want you to say, I'm called. I'm chosen. I'm faithful. One more time, I'm called. I'm chosen. I'm faithful. You look at yourself in the mirror, you're like, I'm called. We're going to have that conversation with us in the mirror. <laughs> but everywhere we go, we see God move. We see transgenders get saved. We see the LGBT community get saved. We see the drug addicts get saved. The voodoo priests, the Satanists, you name it. Because when you go into an atmosphere where there is chaos and you bring the light of God, you shock the darkness. The only way you can shock the darkness is if you go in uninvited. And they say, how'd you get here? Huh? You're not supposed to be here. How'd you get here? How did that happen? But when you get there, the demons start fleeing. Yes. And people start getting saved and delivered. Yes. And I know I'm speaking as an evangelist right now. But it doesn't matter what you do. If you're in the, in the entertainment industry, God is going to use you. He's going to use you to shift the atmosphere in the entertainment industry. He's going to use you in the fashion industry. He's going to use you at your job. He's going to use you in business. He's going to use you in real estate. God wants his people everywhere because we've got to shift the atmosphere in every single place to rule and reign and bring true dominion. This is what we're called to do. It's not just on the streets. It's not just worship on the streets. In it, it's in every single area of life you walk in and Jesus walks in the room. Because you are a carrier of his glory. Come on, shout it out. Say, I'm a carrier of God's glory. I want you to open up Exodus 1. Verse 8 says this. Eventually, a new king came to power in Egypt who knew nothing about Joseph or what he had done. Now, I believe that this scripture and this passage is very prophetic because you could say that it seems like there's a generation that is rising right now 
that knows nothing about the Word of God, knows nothing about principles and morals. And it seems like everything is pushing that agenda. And it seems like they know nothing about it. But God is going to use a remnant to shift the atmosphere. As you're going to see in this story, because I love it, And it would also seem that this agenda is trying to shut the church down. And I'm not just talking about services. I'm talking about your right to speak. I'm talking about your right to have moral convictions. I'm talking about your understanding that I'm a man. (laughs) You're a woman. (laughs) And it's trying to be taken away from you. But let me show you this scripture because it's so beautiful. You guys ready? (laughs) Verse 12, it says, But the more the Egyptians oppressed them, the more the Israelites multiplied and spread, and the more alarmed the Egyptians became. I'm telling you, if you've been feeling like you're oppressed, you're about to multiply like you've never multiplied before. If you feel like you've been attacked in your family, you're about to see the glory of God come on your family. If you feel like it's been on your finances, get ready because overflow is going to overpower you and you won't have room to fill it because it is the way our God works. The more they were oppressed, the more they multiplied and they were alarmed. Man. You see, when the enemy sees how God is going to bless you, he's going to be alarmed. Come on, say alarmed. Alarmed. The enemy is going to be freaked out. (laughs) He's going, I should have never messed with them. I should have never messed with them. They got in the word. They got in prayer. They started fighting for their family. I should have never messed with them. Come on, I am speaking to a people that know that the devil should have never messed with you. Should have never messed with your kids. Should have never messed with your generation. Should have never messed with your family. This is a generation that will see the face of God. That will see the presence of God and move in the presence of God. And don't look to the preacher. God's going to use you. Come on, God's going to use you to build that business that is going to impact society and change culture. That's what God wants to do. Mm. Verse 17, but because... I'll take it back just a little bit. Pharaoh wanted to take out the next generation. And that is what the enemy is doing right now. That's what he's doing through TikTok. That's what he's doing through Reels. That's what he's doing. He's trying to take out and mess with the seed a seed that is holy, which is nothing new because he tried to take Jesus out when he was two, okay? He tried to take Jesus out. Well, guess what? Jesus died on the cross, gave his life for all humanity, and was resurrected in power and glory, and that Power is on the inside of you. Resurrection power is on the inside of you. The spirit without limit is on the inside of you. That's John 3.34. And it talks about the life of Jesus. And it says that in him were God's words. He spoke the word of God. And he had the spirit without measure. He had the spirit without limit. What would happen with the church if we actually believed that we had the spirit without limit? No cap. Come on, lift up your hands and say no cap anymore. 
No cap on my dreams. No cap anymore. Because the spirit without limit is breaking all limitations and all bondage. So the enemy is after the next generation, and Pharaoh was doing the same thing. He told the midwives, he said, when the Hebrew women give birth, kill every baby. Make sure that they're barren. Make sure that the next generation never comes to pass. But God. Verse 17, it says, but because the midwives feared God. Come on, lift up your hands and say, I fear God. They refused to obey the king's orders. They allowed the boys to live too. So the king of Egypt called the midwives. Why have you done this? He demanded. Why have you allowed the boys to live? And I love verse 19. 19 and 20. Man, here's where the fire gets in my belly. The Hebrew women are not like the Egyptian women. The midwives replied, they are more vigorous and have their babies so quickly that we cannot get there in time. Can I tell you that God is about to use you and the enemy is not going to get there in time. He's not going to make it to stop you because by the time he gets there, he's like, I can't. I can't do it. <laughs> they understand who they are. They've gotten in the word. They understand who they are. But look at this. Because here's the blessing for every single person in this room. Every single person watching online. Verse 20. So God was good to the midwives. And the Israelites continued to multiply, growing more and more powerful. Verse 21, and because the midwives feared God, he gave them families of their own. Which means that they had no families of their own. Which means that when you stand up for God, God takes something that was barren and says, multiply. And right now, I'm speaking, I'm speaking to the next generation. And I'm speaking to the generation that you're fighting for. And today, I want to call every single person. The prodigals are coming home. The prodigals are coming home. Because you're in this church, you're praying right now because you're fighting for the next generation. The devil is not having our next generation. No, it's going to be a revival to the fourth generation. My kids are going to get it. Their kids are going to get it. And my grandkids are going to get it. Come on. It's going to be on the young. It's going to be on the old. It's going to be on the four-year-olds. Everybody is going to be moving in the power of God. It's not just going to be on the preacher. The preacher won't know what to do with revival. He'll be like, what's going on? <laughs> how, how do we do this now? Lord, this is a good problem. <laughs> but we're fighting for the next generation. And just like the midwives saved their next generation, I believe that there are people in this room that you're fighting for the prodigals to come home. And if you're in this room right now, you're fighting for spiritual sons to come home, spiritual daughters to come home, physical sons and daughters, people that were backslidden to come home. I want you to stand up in this room right now because we fight for the next generation. We are the remnant. Come on, lift up your hands right now. We are the remnant for the next generation. And we know how the story ends because the next chapter is where Moses comes. And because they fought for the generation, Moses was born and they took him out of exile and brought them into the promised land. And that's what your life is doing for your kids right now. There are Moseses in this room right now. 
in the name of Jesus. Just begin to worship him and praise him. He's so good. He's so good. I want to ask Pastor Rich to come up and pray for you. Thank you, Lord, for your presence. Thank you for your presence, God. Just thank him for the next generation. This is such a word right now that Pastor Phil gave. I know it seems impossible because so many of you are standing. <clears throat> but I want you from the overflow from this main auditorium, if you're standing, to, to come immediately. Don't wait to this altar. Stand. Those coming first, put your toes on the first step just so people can get in behind you. I want all of you to come all as close as you can. This is a prophetic word from the Lord. Hallelujah. A prophetic word from the Lord. I want you to come as, as close as you possibly can. Everyone that's standing. Because we're going to go through a prophetic act. We're going to go through a prophetic act at this altar that will never be reversed. It will never be reversed if you're willing to come and stand at this altar. For those of you that are standing up, if you're standing up, Get to the altar. Get to the altar. Hallelujah. 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 I'm just waiting for everybody to get here. It's going to get here. Praise God. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, this was one powerful Sunday. And uh, I, I think that in both services, it, it seemed like the entire audience, and you've probably seen it, just jam the front. Everybody seems to have some kind of prodigal in their life. Maybe it's a next door neighbor's son or daughter. Maybe you're graced by God and all of your family is saved. But I, I would imagine that you may be watching and, and, and you've got some kind of prodigal in your life that you long to see come home to Jesus. And today, uh, you and I are going to agree in prayer for them. And uh, I, I want you just to listen as I pray. In fact, what I want you to do right now, we usually I usually ask you to repeat the prayer, but I want you just to cup your hands like this to the Lord. And, and, and I want you just to agree with me, all right? Now, I'm going to keep my eyes open. I'm looking at you, but I'm really looking at the Lord. Just agree with me. Would you do it? Lord, I pray for my friend right now. Lord, they're watching today's service because they love you. You have been their Lord for a while and they love Jesus. But now God, today their heart is uniquely touched because they have a prodigal in their life, someone that's running from God, that's close to them. And I pray for my friend who watches right now, God, please, I'm asking you to send the Holy Spirit to that prodigal right now. And I'm asking you, Lord, to draw that person. Maybe it's a young man, maybe it's a young lady, but God, that you would draw that person. And that, Lord, within the next week to 10 days, they'd get a call from that person that something is happening. They feel God is moving in their life. Lord, I ask that you would make it happen for them today in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Wow, I just feel like our agreement together has touched heaven today. And I believe that the Lord is touching the prodigal that you stood in for today. Maybe it's your son or daughter or grandson or granddaughter. Maybe it's a nephew, niece. Maybe it's a husband or a wife or a mom or a dad. I don't know who it is, but it's someone that means a lot to you. Here's what I want you to do today. You see my number on the screen. That's my personal cell number. I want you to dial that number. And I would like you just to list the name of the product. You have to put their last name. Just put their first name. It may be more than one. But put the name or names 
in the script and just say, Pastor, join me in prayer. And I will. Now we've prayed together, but I'll keep praying today more as soon as I get your text. And then make sure you put your name so I know who I'm agreeing with. I often have to ask who sent me this so I know who it is. And you always respond, but I'm just saying today, put the name in, Pastor, agree with me. Pastor, agree with me. You've got their name, then Pastor, agree with me. And then let me know who you are and I'll get right back to you today. We'll agree together. We'll keep agreeing until this miracle happens. I love you so much. Until next time, this is Pastor Rich Wilkerson reminding you to go with God.